everybody, welcome to it. Um, we're back, you know. We're trying to at least, uh, I, I think, like, I remind us of Okobane with Titanic, Lamaji, that are playing the violin as the Titanic yeah. is sinking. Yeah, the industry is really struggling as far as gigs are concerned, as far as music releases are concerned. But pop cars, pop radio, we out here really still trying to deliver yes. uh, great content for you guys to, you know, to decipher and we're doing it without our homie vg as well yeah i mean i'm sure you've watched some of the podcast episodes you know that he has been he hasn't been on air for a while um and we've been having guest presenters each episode but it's not to say that vg's gone he's definitely coming back he's just taking a bit of a hiatus you know sometimes life happens and uh, we need to make room for that at the end of the day but uh he is still our brother we still love him and he's definitely going to return very soon my nigga life is happening right now <laughs> shit <laughs> pana chela yo COVID. Yeah, I know. I know I'm feeling it right now. Really? I wouldn't like to. I wasn't feeling all the other things, but I want to manage it. <laughs> like, manage it, boy. Because it's stretching for too long. It's stretching for too long. It's and stretching. obviously, the reserves have run as thin as they can run. A hundred percent. But nonetheless, we're not going to, uh, you know, wallow too much in the fact that COVID is affecting us. We all are aware of it. But what we are going to do is at least get straight into the vibes of pop radio. Yeah. Uh, we do have a really awesome guest who's going to be joining us today, Miss Nadia Nakai. I'm trying to find a horn. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Braga. She's going to be joining us. She's been doing and getting busy and up to a whole lot of things, yes. which you'll find out more about as we have a conversation. Where she's really moving. Yes, yeah, she is a she is a queen in her own right, and I think she she owns that space that she's in, and she's I think she's at that you know that level of confidence where no one yeah. can fuck with you. Yeah, that's what she's at right now. You, you can see how far you've come, and you know exactly where you're going. A hundred percent. And I'm keen to hear a little bit more from Nadia, so I think we should you know invite her in and get to know her just a little bit better. No doubt. <laughs> Well, we'll hit the jingles a little bit later. What's up, everybody? Welcome to it. Flanked by two wonderful ladies, so I'll let them... Say what's up to you guys. <laughs> Hi. What's up, what's up, what's up? We're back again. Another episode of Pop Radio. Hanging out with my homie Scoop Makatuni. And we've got a lovely guest in studio with us today. Who's going to be chatting to us. And uh, hopefully... <laughs> got it. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Why does it have to be an evil laugh, guys? Am I allowed to swear? Yes, yeah. you can. What the fuck, you guys? <laughs> <laughs> hopefully there'll be no holds barred. No, mm. hopefully not. She mm. doesn't strike me as a person that no. bows her holds. No, <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't. Greet the people I'm not. excited. Hi, I haven't guys. seen you so long. It's been COVID. Yeah. You know, people haven't like seen you outside of the show that you're doing, but we'll get yeah. into that later. So, come on, bullies. Hi, guys. How are you? My name is Anina Kai, and I'm making so much money. Ooh. So nice. You are making a lot of money, and you the know? manager that's helping her do that is sitting yeah. right there. <laughs> Machos, I was checking out um, an insert where you were like, what to look out for when choosing a good manager. And I thought that you are one of the people yeah. that can actually give that advice. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what did you say? Well, it's crazy because she's been my best friend since 2013 or right? 2012. So she didn't start out managing me. She was always my supporter, my cheerleader. It always cheerleader. helps because we are quasi mm. umdu. Yeah, she does. And I think when I started working with her, I understood how important it is to have a manager that cares about your heart. It's because it's like this industry, it's very personal. A lot of things affect us and you have to have somebody that can build you up as well. And that's mm. the nice thing of having a best friend and a manager. Also the fact that she's hardworking. Also the fact that she's not working for me. She's also working for herself. She has her own goals that she wants to achieve sure. in yeah. music. So they kind of like link really, really well, which yeah. is dope. I don't have to like make her wake up to graft. She yeah. wakes up and she breathes bugger because she has her own goals that she also wants to achieve, which is which nice. Works but I guess that's also that also plays in with the selection of the correct manager because uh, a lot of people can have really dope friends. But those really dope mm, friends don't, don't really translate. wake up in the morning <laughs> <laughs> and translate. do the work. <laughs> no you know what I mean? Yeah. 100%. But I think it's because I I attract hard workers. Like nice. Even if it's in a relationship or if it's like a, a, a friendship or whatever. Gotta <laughs> 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 drop the bomb on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's because the things that it's nice to to have friends that work hard. And you like you can have friends that have a good time with, but you yeah. can't make those your managers because for sure. you can see they're not yeah. about the, the end result. They're there for they're the for bottle themselves. service. 100%. <laughs> And so we turn up too. We'll sit there for the bottle service too. <laughs> <laughs> but we wake up and we we'll talk about the chicks as well. So, exactly. so yeah. brother, like, there's so much uh, <laughs> celeb style about you right yeah. now. First of all, 
I see that I've park. Yes. Drop the park. I mean, we jealous, right. but you know, <laughs> secondly, you know. This fragrance that you smell oh. of, like why does everybody who is making money <laughs> and in the entertainment industry, tell us about this fragrance. What is this? It's Baccarat. Hey, it's what? what? <laughs> one thing I can tell you is hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop. What is it? Hip hop. Hip hop. So, the first ah, time I smelled it. Hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop. <laughs> he was the first one that I smelt it on, him and Ricky. Yes. So it's it's made its rounds now. It really has, but this was actually a gift. I didn't get it by choice. It was oh. a Valentine's Day gift. Oh. 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 Yeah. Uh, okay. Cosmo, I'm from, getting it open from, this from, and from the other with the Valentine's Day questions. <laughs> Valentine's gift when? This year? This or? year. Okay. Yeah. So it's obviously not the, the one that we're all assuming it would come from. Ugh, I don't know who you're saying because I've been seen with a lot of niggas. Okay. I don't know who you're talking okay, about. Okay, okay. Who are you How? talking about? Ah, never mind. It's fine. <laughs> We're not in that league. What I wanted <laughs> to ask you though. <laughs> How was Valentine's? Valentine's was really nice. Because yeah, um, I wanted to see if you were maybe also going to splash, you know, photo shoot, do the whole like... I did, but I shot that morning, actually. Yeah. So I posted, you know, my normal on-brand Braga pictures with the booty. Yeah. And the tits Fana! Si and Jen, si and Si I'm like, yo, this girl is very confident. Yeah. That's the one way I look at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, Braga, you're really confident with it out there, dog. I am, and I think I always have been, but I'm not going to lie, like when Meg came out and she yes. came out with like the natural body look, yes. Like yeah. the tiny waist and the big booty, everything is kind of like proportional to her body and her height. It also gave me like a lot of like a confidence boost because I'm a tall girl. Yeah, I don't have a tiny waist, but my waist is nice and I got nice thighs and a booty. Yeah, so it's when scary I see how her, much alike you guys are, energy wise yeah. and just <laughs> demeanor wise. Aren't you like when you look at that? Because when I go to her page, yeah, sometimes I also <laughs> <laughs> and I, when I go to uh, Megan's page, I always see you there liking, and I'm like, yeah. I mean, these are twins. Like, do you feel like that? Is it scary seeing someone who is so much like you? It is, because it's also like we have the similar smile also. Like, when she yeah. smiles, like yeah. her gums are showing. Yeah. Like, we have similar Your vibes. Your quirkiness, the way you guys yeah. are, like, very quirky and very joking about it. You and know also, I, mean? I saw, like, a behind-the-scenes thing where she was doing her glam and she was reading episode on her phone. You know that game where, like, you, it's yeah, books? Yeah. I do that, too. So, I was oh, just like, so. I mean, I was supposed to be in America. I was supposed to be her. <laughs> she took my spot. <laughs> <laughs> I delayed the process and the yeah. progress. But I love her, though, because... Yeah. She does inspire me, and um, it's nice to see someone that's very similar to me make it that side, which is cool. Don't you find that people will always kind of liken you to the, the, the crates of, of, of the uh, the entertainment industry? Obviously, initially it was Miss Nicki Minaj, mm. and now you... Oh, l- well, I like the fact that you are actually taking on this likening to make the stallion because I, I I realized that maybe earlier on it was like okay yeah I like Nikki but I'm still my own person yeah. but here you're like you're really really feeling into the Meg um, association. But it's because I'm looking up. I like the fact that they're comparing me to people that are bigger than me. Nice. I've, I've, at the beginning, it was annoying because they'll put on flyers. <laughs> Nadia Nakai small. Essays, Nicki Minaj, huge. <laughs> Don't lie. Like, uh-uh, guys, that can't be your drawing card. Sure. I'm, not, I'm not a gimmick. I'm not like an impersonator or whatever yeah. the case is. But there was a lot of like drama about, oh, Nadia's trying to be Nicki Minaj. And it wasn't that. It's was just, I was just a feminine rapper. I was a person that looked, that had my pink nails and my pink wig. And because mm. I was just being a girl. And and when you look at the artists that are from like the UK, like Miss Banks, make the stand. Yeah. Lisa Mercedes, Monique Laws, Nadia Rose, all of them look have that the you same. Can just save them off the top of your head, like because a lot of lady rappers don't know lady uh, the rappers. Lady yeah. rappers. No, yeah. I do because I really look at that market and see how I'm gonna fit. Because I don't look at myself as just an African artist. Mm. I look at myself as the day that I branch branch out to the UK, which is one of my objectives. How do I differentiate myself to these people that I've just nice. mentioned, you know? Mm. But you look at them and the aesthetic is the same. They all get their wigs from the same person, Edmund. I also get my wig from the same person. Yeah! <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, come so on. I get come on. Come on. You can tell. I'm come like on. Guy. <laughs> yeah, you're not the wig guy. <laughs> no, it's like getting wigs from the right person, that's yeah. a flex because yeah. um, everybody knows there's a lot of mashaya shayas here on the street where you'll buy a wig yes. and it only lasts a month and then it's tricking Anna, but you've wasted your money. So if you know yeah. you getting it from the correct person who's dressing the stars yes come on I mean he does Eve's hair because mm. she's based in London now he does yeah. Eve's hair and I've looked up to Eve all my life he does everybody like he's just the guy and I met him when I when I went to London and I met Steph and she's the one that licked me linked me with Edmund nice so I was like those, those are the circles I want to keep you know yeah. not downing anyone in SA like there's great makeup also hair artists here that I use but when I'm looking for that specific multicolored vibes yeah. mm. I know where I need to go and that's kind of the level I'm at speaking of no- going knowing where you need to go for hair and looks 
this year, I was really nicely surprised to see you going somewhere like Vic Mensa for verses. Mm. Yeah. That was dope. How did that come about? It's so crazy. I've always been a fan of Vic. Like Yo, since he's nice. like 1993. Yeah. Like like Everything about him has been my vibe. Sure. So he had taken a sabbatical, which I, as a fan, would always notice. And then he posted on Instagram that he's back in studio. So I just commented and I said, yay, finally. Followed me immediately. And I remember I was with the girls in my house and we've been drinking. We've been drinking. Uh, yes. So now I was like, do I reply? And everyone thought, no, this guy wants bums. This guy definitely just wants your bums. Mm. And I was like, no, guys, let me reply. And then I'm like, okay, no, no. They said, no, wait till the next day to reply to him. And I'm like, okay, cool, shut up. That time I'm replying like immediately. <laughs> sure. And then he was like, yo, I like your stuff. Like, send me any songs that you want me to jump on so I sent him a few songs including practice yeah practice already been done packaged I was already I'd already sent it we're gonna drop the album we had to push the album deluxe back because I had to wait for his verse mm. he sent it through in a week his verse and he even had like references of Hillbro and all that which is really nice. really cool and Yovel even though he doesn't pronounce Yovel but he sent <laughs> it and he sent it in a week and that was that then he called me saying that he's coming to Ghana because he's originally from Ghana wow and his plan Didn't was know to that. yeah he's originally from there mm. so I mean his middle name is Kwesi which means born on a Sunday so mm. yeah and then he was like he was initially oh they got the middle names down <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> so he called me and he's like, Listen, I'm coming to Ghana, but I want to come to SA too. But then that whole this new strain of COVID happened, and he's like, Listen, I'm scared. So I was like, Don't worry, we're coming through. So me and my we're girl. also scared, and we live here. I know. <laughs> so I was like, I will come to Ghana. I haven't been to Ghana in a while. I'll go to Nigeria a lot. I'm like, Ghana's a place I need to go check out. So me and Pindi, two men, as we always do, come got into on. a flight. <laughs> And we found a production company in Ghana also. And you know, I've shot with Studio Space ever since I started. I haven't shot with anybody else. Wow. So it was also like a, a shock for me to use someone new. And they were very happy about the fact that I'm South African that's coming to work with Ghanaian um, um, videographers. Because yeah. more often than not, Ghanaian artists come to SA. Because yeah. yeah. they feel like the quality is better here or the scenery is better here. So every time I did an interview, they really al- appreciate the fact that I came as a South African to work with a Ghanaian team to work on my music video and they knocked it out of the park. They sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. It's crazy, like, when I was asking that story, I didn't know there were so many layers to that answer. Oh. Like, there was, like, like that, that was, yeah. that's a long journey with Vic Mens. Are you yeah. guys still in contact now? Yeah. Oh, so. why are you smiling <laughs> like that? <laughs> we're still in contact, yes. <laughs> is, is, there, is, is, is there another layer that we're maybe not <laughs> no, aware of? No. Because it just sounded like the, <laughs> me, okay. It's not a Valentine well, contact no, or what? I don't know. Questions to you now. I get, like, ah, did you see the way she looked at me? Even even Bindi was like, okay. <laughs> <Dog>. <laughs> no, we're still in contact. Answered your question. Okay. Oh, are, there, are there any plans of going to Chicago, LA, or New York anytime soon? Yeah, but there's also plans for him to come here. I think he's. More I wasn't talking about him. I was just talking about you. <laughs> of course, there's always plans to go to the states because of the opportunities okay there. but you were saying that he's gonna come ah, here soon. yeah he's coming here. <laughs> okay. he's definitely coming here sorry he's definitely coming yeah. here soon because i think he's he has a, he his heart is in africa nice that's what yeah. he wants to do sounds like know. it <laughs> his Valentine's heart is in yeah, South right, Africa. Yes. Uh, smell of butter. Uh huh. Oh, with please, with please, that please, Valentine's please, please, gift. Please, 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 please. Come on. <laughs> All right. So um, the deluxe album dropped, right? Mm-hmm. And I love the amount of work that you put behind the actual album because Nadia Naked came out and you had put your heart and soul into it. I remember even when we did the interview on Five and you were just talking about how you wanted to take a different direction and you know yeah. put your soul into the into the uh, into the album. And of course, with the deluxe coming out as well as with the documentary um, special. What kind of dis- made you decide to kind of take that direction? Because I think a lot of people, when they actually release music, they're just like, okay, there you go, music yeah. videos and done. You decided to rather go for a first. Mm. Uh, and also, why did you even choose um, Showmax yeah. in that mm. direction? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I know that I'm a visual artist. I know like, even though with my album, I'm always jumping up and down. Did you listen to it? Even with D, I gave him a hard time. Did you listen to my album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quote one line. <laughs> except from now, I mean, and I'm a boss. <laughs> because I know. Like, and I'm, I don't think it's just me. I feel like this is something that female artists, especially with hip-hop, yeah. deal with. Where men think that they can't resonate with our narrative because mm. it's coming from a woman's perspective. But it actually, there's a lot of stuff that people can resonate with our stories and our storylines and, and stuff like that. So I know when I need to get their attention, I definitely use my likeness of my body and my booty and all of that because it's mine and I'm I'm allowed to leverage it. For and sure. I don't care what people mm-hmm. say because I Niggas use. leverage their six packs. 100%. They do. Uh, do you have a six pack? Me no. Not at all. <laughs> no, but oh. you leverage your intellect. It's a leverage. I leverage There's a lot of There's some dumb things. people yeah. out here 
You can leverage your intellect. Yeah, so just because you're smart, you have an advantage. Of course, you have an advantage because it's, it's yours. I use it. You use it. It's mm. not my fault that you are dummy, dumb, dumb for the rest of the fucking people. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's literally so. Yeah. So I was like, when I did the deluxe, I did like a little bit of a visual album that I shot at my aunt's house. It was during lockdown, and then I shot um, forty bars also with the green screen because we had all those restrictions. I was super hectic last year, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to keep quiet and just like release songs without releasing the content the way that I know how. Yeah. I have to drop a song with. The music video because I know once I drop the music video it really takes off because people want to go and say yo we might see Nadia Nakai's bombs mm. but actually the song is fire yeah. and it happens like that so I don't I don't I don't take that lightly yeah and the reason why we chose Showmax was the guy that we worked on um, the launch with which is Batandwa Batandwa made on him on the show that I did with Scoop mm -hmm. um, your MTV Raps he's the one that did the whole thing with the with the um, launch of the first album and he documented it and he had already had um, relations with Showmax nice which was cool but I had connects with Netflix from the Queen Sono conversations um when they were taking my song for for one of their soundtracks, but we were just like let's let's do with the people that really want it. That I still had to kind of sell it to Netflix, if you know what uh, I mean. With Showmax, so we're like just give us all your content. Yes. But it was also a learning curve because I realized when you shoot stuff yourself, they don't put as much marketing behind things. Whereas if it's a Showmax original. Yeah. They do all of that. And I didn't yeah. realize that. So I thought I was going to get all the bells and the whistles. And that didn't necessarily happen. I was like, okay, so whatever I do next, it has to be shot by them. In, yes. in, in Inside, in-house. Yeah. Uh -huh. As far as COVID goes, yeah, I think you've managed to roll with the, with the, with the market and what, what needs to be done at this moment, giving us content. It's never easy, I believe, for someone who still has a biting music career to then sit on this side of the chair mm. you know um how has that been for you to be able to like conversate with artists and have them share your space i think it's amazing yeah mm. i think it's amazing and i think it's because i also know the right questions to ask and also the people that i had on the show people i have relationships with so it was like mm. just having a normal conversation mm. that didn't feel it wasn't scripted at all it was like very unhanded. So that's why even when yeah. I was posting it, I wasn't saying check the interview. I was saying check the conversation. Yeah. Because it really was on that tip. And I, I, start, I shot that in my living room because again, with the restrictions, we couldn't do much. And I'm always thinking about how am I still going to pay my bills? I need to make sure I can pay <laughs> the all of us the car. Sure. So we're all just you trying know? to survive. Exactly. Yeah. So it was so exciting. It was challenging for me to put on the producer hat 100%. And I had a lot of help with the team that I had, which was also really dope. Was that also... Um, one of the conversations that kind of was accepted because of the show Max um, relationship that you created for you to be able to get the TV show. No, so actually it had nothing to do with show Max. Frat Packer, someone that I worked with years ago on battle stations on your TV, which yep. is Cabello. Yeah, and Cabello is a, a channel O, so he's always been a really good friend of mine. I told him like I've got this thing. He's like whatever it is, send it to me. I want it. <laughs> he's just always supported me. We've always been cool. So he was just like, okay, I'll give you the time. Just know that you need to bring your own sponsors and your own yeah. bells and whistles, yeah. and yeah. that's what we did. So he he was amazing, and we were on season two now with a new sponsor and also new location new set which is also really nice exciting. 100 Very that's nice. so yeah. dope Thank you. so now where are we at like how and how do you think about things going forward how do you envision the industry going forward yeah how do you feel about the steps back that we have taken as the entertainment industry at simzans africa i'm depressed heike mm. um i i've actually made thanks the for the honesty you know? <laughs> um i've made the decision to not do shows purely on the fact that i'm tired of doing this, the lukewarm ones i want to go back mm. to what we did you know yeah. that was what mm. my passion was that was my what was happy for me and i'm not trying to comp compromise my happiness by doing these shows that firstly don't get, give me my whole show fee because they're also struggling with paying artists mm. and why am i risking my life for things that are not at the way that i want them and not at the coin level that i want them so i've been like listen i'm actually just going to wait it out to a point where we all take our vaccines the COVID numbers go down and we start doing the shows that i enjoy which are the festivals and and the out of out of club vibes. Yeah. Um. I'll do a couple hostings here and there if I feel like I just want to party and get paid for it. For, but I won't do it because I need to. I need to to pay my bills. I've, my my mind has changed. Um, sure. I've I want to be able to make money and not have to leave my house. I don't want to have to work and do six gigs a weekend anymore. I'm not there anymore. Mm. I want to be able to to really push my fashion range because that happens when I'm at home buying mm. clothes. I don't have to be there to push that. The shows. I obviously have to leave my house to go to the show, but I don't have to be like actively doing something. I don't have to take my whole team, which is unfortunate because my team also is suffering, but I'm giving them different roles now. Like my road manager is going to be my copywriter now and stuff sure. like that. So 
it's it's just right now. You want that it, passive income. Yeah, and I think that's what I'm comfortable with now because I'm scared. Like, I go out and I'm scared. I don't know what's going to happen. Am I going to get the COVID? <laughs> and I don't know this new strain apparently is a boss ninja. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I it's And it makes me really sad because I don't know when it's going to happen. It is, yeah. quite, it is quite scary to kind of find ourselves in, in this position where we're now having to think of different ways to make money where it wasn't the original thing because you got into this because of your talent and your love for hip-hop and now you are forced not necessarily forced i mean sometimes it's a good thing you know to kind of realign yourself and like you're saying you want to be at home you want to be able to do things from home now that obviously then places you in a position where you're now having to do other things for instance your tv show which is now means you are now a tv presenter mm-hmm. do you understand you are also an influencer because maybe you might get some campaigns um you're also now finding yourself um fashion mm-hmm. or whatever now how do you feel about that conversation about possibly open up the industry as people like to to name it because there's this there's this feeling in South Africa that ah South African artists want to do everything why c- must we see the same faces all the time yeah. how do you feel about that but knowing that you're also trying to expand yourself at some point and not only just be a rapper when I'm a rapper that's doing TV you're not seeing the same face in the same place uh. I think the problem is and I'm, I'm gonna call out I'm not gonna call out but I'm just gonna have this discussion I just want to understand why yeah. and you need to tell me why yeah. and understand why I'm saying why why why, why? hold on to the word why, why? Or the letter why? why? Some of those FM. presenters on YFM have been there for eight years. Why? 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 I'm asking why? you. Why? Why? Why though? I mean, like, why? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can we get an answer? <laughs> so my answer is that for me, as an entertainer, let's just say I'm a musician, I'm a rapper, I have a baby, and I decide mm-hmm. I want to relax. I'm allowed to change my path in entertainment. I'm allowed to do TV as yeah. long as I'm not doing the same station for eight years. Doc, even allow if you're doing the, new the same station. Come in. It can't be. Why? No, because I feel like that's where you're not giving new opportunities to people that are coming but out that, of the, the, that, the, the school radios. I mean, that's the trajectory of the career. You start in school, then you go to Y, then you go to... Of course, there is, um, there is definitely a need for new blood to come in. But new blood coming in mustn't be at the expense of an industry. I'll tell you why I'm saying this. Okay, I understand. It is only in entertainment where people have this narrative that qualified people who have gotten the jobs in entertainment must then give way for other people. Mm. Mind you, in entertainment, we don't even get paid that much. And people don't realize that that's why. That's the first reason why people double up, triple up on jobs is because the check isn't that good in the first place. Mm -hmm. Then next to say is, if you go to uh, professions like law, doctors, you will never hear motherfuckers going, I uh, can you let's get a, let us get in in the doctor's seat. <laughs> make no, way for no, make way for the new wave. No, that's what you're misunderstanding me because when you're a doctor, you first study, yeah, yeah? and then you intern for like two years for 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 pro bono, whatever. Yeah. Then you b- go into a doctor's thingy and then you get your own residency. Then you go into a place where you become a profession. Then you open your own, but wait, then you open your own practice. Not, yeah. not, not, not everyone, all of them. Not everyone, no, but I'm everyone opens a practice. Not everyone yeah. does. That's your decision. But yeah. I'm just saying that there's a trajectory in your career that you continue leveling up. You get promoted, you get a bigger job, you get a higher position. What I'm saying is that in the industry where they're saying open up the industry is that People can't be stuck in that space. That, like I said, with radio, you yeah. start with high school radio. I mean, varsity, varsity radio, yeah. which is what like UJFM or whatever. Then you move to a YFM. Now you're actually talking about real becoming a celebrity in radio. Then you'll go to let's just say a metro. Then you'll go to maybe private and then ninety four point seven. Once you get the white market, then you graduate to a five FM. You grow. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. You're not supposed to be staying. Yes, I understand the money is bad, but the money is going to be bad for as long as you don't grow as an individual. But the, 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 it's difficult to say grow when also then the 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 other radio stations are like, no, we won't. We don't want new blood. We want to stick with the people. That's we the know. problem. No, what no, do you no, mean? no. That's not how it works. You, uh, the thing is, uh, you see exactly what you had mentioned about how uh, in medicine you need to work your certain hours and you need to be in a certain position for a certain amount of time or whatever the case is. Maybe you are um, you're doing your locums and then you have to move to residency or whatever mm. the case is. In radio, there's also a trajectory in how that actually has to grow because unfortunately, radio is all about audience mm. and audience needs to be grown 
over a certain period of time. So they need to keep the same audience for at least a minimum of three years. Minimum. 100%. And of course, then growing that, yes, I understand maybe about seven, eight years is slightly a little bit over it. Mm. Extensive. Yeah. I agree on, on seven years. Yeah. But for them to be there for five years is a healthy amount yeah. of time I on I radio. I can take five years yeah. too. Do you understand that? So it's not necessarily that every year somebody needs to be replaced. No ways. Because no that, ways. But that's what you were saying. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, why for so long? Why eight years? I, yeah. g- I can take five. I get what you're saying. And I'm saying that you shouldn't change your personality every year because then no one's resonating with their personalities. You're not connecting. Mm. But there's some that are staying long. And I feel like, f- not even for opening up the industry, your own career trajectory. Mm. What don't you want to grow as a personality? Because mm. I know for myself. Some people don't. That's the problem. Some people, let's be that real about it. Some people are just coming to get the check. That's terrible because that's another issue that I have and I have an issue with record labels too because a lot of record labels are hiring people that are getting there to get a check and not inspired by the music. So therefore, they're doing 9 to 5 and they're not doing extra effort or nothing because there's no passion. And that's what my problem is with people taking sure. a job for 8 years because you're there to pay your bills. You're actually not and, passionate and you know about what you... know how it goes. Exactly. So you're not here to change things. You're not here to change problem. and, and change the status quo. Is, another problem is when you go to these places, Nods, you get in there. Like a lot of people go into corporate spaces and the first thing you think of is, yo, I'm going to change the game. Yeah. Then you get into your first meeting <laughs> and you get, you get told shit like, listen here, but we're not here trying to see superstars, eh? <laughs> Just push the numbers, push the quota. Just rock. Like you're not here to be, listen, but we're not here looking for a hero, eh? Aww. Just don't come here trying to ruffle the feathers. Just... Just, just roll just, the just, boat just as do it is. No, just but do I, your job. But 100%. But if you did ruffle the feathers and you grew as an individual like how yeah. both of you guys have, you guys are brands without the stations that you want. Yeah. You guys have become big. And believe me, that is such a currency. Because yeah. right now, there are people that have been on those radio stations for eight years that are getting fired over things that they weren't even involved in. But if she was a bigger name or a bigger household brand, they would have respected her more. Mm. And that's the problem. Because these boots don't ruffle the feathers mm. are going to say that you're a placeholder <laughs> until you you make yourself a brand and you yeah. ruffle those feathers True to a point that. where they know that you need to be on the station because the person driving to work wants to hear Scoop, wants to hear Noni. There's a mm. value with that name. But there has to be passion behind that. Mm. If you are listening to that person say, don't ruffle the feathers and you say, shop, I'm not going to. Then you're not passionate. You're not, you're not you supposed don't to belong be here. You don't belong here. Let's not have the same conversation. You don't belong here. So that is really what is the thing about Nadia. I feel like whether we're talking about rap, whether we're talking about endorsement deals, whether we're talking about uh, you going into doing your own platform, I feel like right now, even having worked with you at MTV Base, I feel like right now I'm getting to know Mm. what drives you. You really are about shaking up the tables. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're really about. Yeah. Yeah. It just happens to happen in a medium and a form that is hip hop. Yeah. And it's probably easier for, as a lady, for you in your generation, it was the most easiest thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So you're really about changing the status quo. 100%. That's what... And and changing how you perceive women in hip hop. And changing the fact that you're not listening to our narratives, I'm going to stuff it down your throat. And if you're mad, you're going to be madder now because you're going to see me on all your TV stations because I've got two TV shows. Mm. Third one is my own show. Mm. So what are you going to do? One thing I can tell you, go to hip hop. Sorry. Sorry. You're going to be mad. You've got got two shows. I've got two shows and then the third show is my own show. So what's the first one? Yes. The first one is, um, what is that show called, Fred? Ah, (laughs) no idea. No, 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 not Gen Z. Um, The the Pan-African one I just shot now. Biggest trainer. Sorry. Biggest trainer. <laughs> it's on a <laughs> It's on a new <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, we keep pressing the wrong button. Oh. <laughs> We're still troubleshooting it. Yeah. Give us a chance. Mm. It's on a new um, TV channel called Honey TV. Mm. Oh, yes. I've heard yes. of that, that channel. Shout out. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's What's Honey TV? We don't know about it. It's a pan African TV station. So obviously nice. it's based here, but they look at creating content for the whole of Africa, which sure. is my brand right now. And um, I'm a judge on that with Kanim Bao, um, Le Khan, and then the presenters, Nay the Bay. Awesome. So it's also really dope. And then I have a new show on Channel O called Gen Z, which is about Generation Z. Costa teaches in Venice. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, and I'm the presenter for that show, and nice. it's amazing. Nice. And I'm working with Marvin, and w- working with Marvin. If you guys don't know Marvin, Marvin literally was behind Live Amp. Like yeah, we know Marv. And when he was like, "I need you on the show," I got really excited because I feel like he's the guy that can really cultivate me into yeah. this. Uh, you have to. You can't be a jack of all trades and master of none. So right now, sure. if I'm focusing on presenting. I want to be really good at it. Yeah. You know, and working with someone like him is definitely what I've always wanted to do. Nice one. Yeah. So the third one will be Naked Dream. 
Sheesh, girl. <laughs> Which is my show. <laughs> That's really dope. Thank nice. You. Give us a little bit of a rundown from a fashion perspective. I mean, mm. um, with your growth throughout the years, we've obviously seen how you've changed, how you've evolved, how you've also um, gotten so confident in yourself and your body and, and the way that you've kind of worked that into a fashion space as well. Uh, you did say that you're also working on, um, well, I mean, you you had sold out on your Red Bat um, uh, collaborations that you had done over the yeah. years, which was really amazing. And how was that now uh, growing from a perspective of no longer just collaborations, but you just doing Nadia, you 100%, everything, every coin is coming yeah. back to you. Every coin does come back to me with, with sports and it's definitely my biggest check and investment. Yeah. But I get what you're saying where it's just like not Nadia X Red Bad, just yes. like Nadia as its own. Yeah. That's definitely something I do want to do, but I want to do it when I have more time. I don't have time to to travel to the the, the, the manufacturers and be as involved as I am with them. Um, I don't have the time right now, but that's definitely what I want to do when I start having kids and sitting down and getting married and all of that. Ooh, but is that with your Valentine? Yes. Ooh, <laughs> dang it. Now, who is the Valentine? <laughs> this is the question. That's definitely my baby daddy. <laughs> Let me tell you wow. something. For sure. Definitely I'm glad, you know. I'm glad. Yeah. But don't call him out too quick. Boy, no, 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 I'm no, relaxed. Don't, don't, do that. don't call him out too quick. No, but I'm not. Don't okay. Worry. I'm not. <laughs> but yeah. I'm just letting you know. You know? <laughs> Niggas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think Scoop wants to secretly know like who it is, but he'll ask no, you off I air don't. or something. I really don't. Yeah. I'm good. She is nosy. She wants to know. I am being nosy, I won't lie. But I mean, that's the name of the game. That's what we do. You yeah. know, you poke and poke and hopefully they... But clearly she's going to keep it under wraps. No, so I tried. Wraps. I really did try. Oh, yes. You know, but, is <laughs> it, but oh, okay. Well, speaking on that, do you also feel that maybe you want to be a little bit more private and personal in this relationship pro, uh, compared to how you were in your previous relationship 100%. and how and how blown up it was in in I will in the never social media. Mm. ever have a public relationship ever again and I know I said that to you when I broke up with Dot and you were like ah you guys watch him I was like <laughs> never again and then I got caught up and then you know but now yeah, you got caught up for a while it was I a long see. time yes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. a long catch up that yeah. <laughs> it was a tricky situation anyway um, no but I definitely don't want to do that again because like I I said when when I broke up with Dot, who's a very good friend of mine now, mm. and I, I I was just like everybody feels like they have a right to ask you what happened with this person, what's going mm. on with this person, what, and it's like I'm, I'm tired of talking about my exes when they're not my man. Like, sure. but when it's public, you have to explain things because everybody yeah. comes and says, "I see you guys are not together. What's going on?" Or, "Oh, Nadia, you're with this other person. What's happening?" You know, everybody's just very intrusive on your life, and I don't want that again, especially at my age. I don't want to mm. be dealing with that. I want to live my life. If the relationship fails, I don't want people to know it's completely done, like a 360. I learned my lesson, and it ain't happening again. Yeah. No yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's call it, man. We've had enough <laughs> anecdotes out here from Nadia. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, man, no. I mean, obviously, if we can have more time, it would be great. But unfortunately, we don't. Yeah. But I do think it's really awesome the amount of uh, feats you've actually achieved over time. I mean, yeah. obviously, like I had known you from way back when you were still working with, yeah, with the Sifo. You know what I mean? So it's great to see. I found that out. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> really it's been re wanting this. Man. Yeah. I guess, I guess no, no, no. She's been pushing of, for that's it. A, that's a lot of... Uh, of the story as far as the ladies is concerned that doesn't come out mm. is how long they've wanted this. With a guy, you know, it's always like, yeah, I used to hang out with so-and-so and -so, no, I used to see him with so-and-so. With the ladies, everybody thinks like as soon as they pop an ass and some boobs and are provocative, yeah. it just happened then. Not yeah. realizing that, no, also, ladies have yeah. a long road of chipping away at the goal and getting where they're supposed yeah. to. No, but the thing is that we all talk about it, but people only listen when they see our bums and then they get mad when we show our bums. What exactly. the hell? Like, we talk, <laughs> I've talked about mm. my road. I've been in the game for eight years. I say I'm a big body bitch for a reason because I am. Mm. I'm not a child. I know the game very well. You can't come and school me now unless you like a bigger guy, like, like mm. been in the game for a longer time than me. Mm. But I've talked about the relations. I talk about how Speedy and Cap are my old friends in the game because they were with me when I was in a whoopty. I had a whoopty, babes. You know, a Fiat Polio? Sure. Bad she paint job. That a whoopty. I couldn't, I couldn't lock the door. I couldn't close the windows. Yeah. When I drove to the the door swing open. Dude, that was me. Mm. You know? But people don't know that and I talk about it all the time but they don't hold on to those gems because people don't think women actually get into the industry of merit. They think that we're using our bodies or whatever the case is and that is not true. Yeah. You know? What, what, what do you think will actually kind of change that narrative? Because I've had these conversations as well before. I mean, I'm always trying to push the, the, the female narrative ahead with regards to hip-hop and sometimes it also just feels like you're just like speaking to yourself in one ear, out the other, mm. in one ear, out the other the whole time. And... 
I don't know what it's going to take. I'm, I'm still chipping away at it. I'm still trying to see how females can be taken seriously from a standpoint of owning a show and not mm. necessarily having to be um, supported act. by somebody else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or even just to get that ear for people to listen to your album. Do you know what I mean? Without having to be like bothered. Good day. Hey, yeah. Did you listen? Did you listen? Did you listen? I honestly think the, the whole did you listen thing was more with my peers. Yeah. No, I understand yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying in general, it might not be with your peers, but yeah. sometimes even with the fans. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly think it takes time. I honestly think that I've had people that have grown with me mm. that saw me when I was guest judging on battle stations to dropping my first song to get into a point where I did my album and I got my accolades. And the thing about it is that I feel like I've gotten to a stage. If it wasn't for COVID, I can do a stadium not as big as Rufile <laughs> but like I was planning to do that and I had a f I knew in my gut that I'd be able to fill this up as a lead as mm. a person that I am because it's not just about the music with me my fans resonate with me yeah. they love me they've seen my journey and that's why I can sell things to them because they, they believe in me they want to know what I'm drinking they want to know that's why my clothes sell out mm. my clothes sell out because they want to look like me it's not even just about the music so I know that if I had to do a show they would come out and that only comes in time you can't buy hype you can't sure. buy you can buy sorry you can buy hype but you can't buy longevity you can't buy authenticity that takes years my, some of my friends <laughs> in high school and are graduating now and starting their first job and mm. still telling me, yo, I remember you when I was going to school. And you've and grown I just, with them. And I've grown yeah. with them. So they will definitely have my back and you can't say today I'm a rapper and expect that. But a lot of people do that. They come yeah. into the game, get gassed up by everybody saying, oh, you're the best, you're the best, you're the best, thinking you're going to do the same thing I'm going to do just because I'm quiet and I'm just like, okay, and I'm watching. They think, oh no, Nadia can't do this. I have hype right now. Hype confuses a lot of people. Yeah. Sure, because I've had to say, let's go to Ellis Park together. Babes, you're Tricky. not going to do what I do. Yeah. You're not. But yeah. I'm not shouting and saying, yeah, 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 I'm a star. I know I'm a star when I walk in the room. You feel me? <laughs> 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 All right, on that note, we're going to go, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, Game yeah. Game yeah. over. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, Nadia. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank um, you. I know that every time we talk, I talk to you, I get to... I uh, get to know a little bit extra, a little mm. bit more of you. So I'm, mm. I'm sure the people can resonate yeah. with that as well. Thank you. 100%. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for sharing. I we will I definitely... You guys were going to ask about the, the price show. You guys don't do research. No. no. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not something... You don't that discuss. It's not something that oh, is okay. like... You know but what I mean? The thing is, yeah. it's also Those just days like... Those are gone, dog. We're not going <laughs> to chill there, dog. It's been eight You're years. Done. You're ah, done. You're it's, done. It, it's been eight years. You guys dog. are done with this beef, no? I am also done. Ah, no, dog. we're over it. Also, really aren't you dog. tired? I'm tired. That's why I did it. I mean... Ah, dog. I'm I'm so tired. Tired. We're all tired. I'm proud of you for doing the interview and yeah. saying that you would do the song as yeah. well. Yeah. Because before, you weren't saying that. You know? I wasn't. You I really weren't. wasn't, but then yeah. I just had to be But also, our aim here isn't to have you all knuckled up with your own words, you know? No, I'm not. I'm really sure of myself. Showcase. Mm. <laughs> that was that was really dope. I actually really wanted to hear your opinion, you both of you, on mm -hmm. on when you guys saw that I was doing that because I think a lot of people got. Okay, really so surprised. let's get into it then. Okay, just hold on, <laughs> So what do you want to ask us, Nadia? <laughs> yeah. I just want to know because I know that everyone has seen me as and Family Tree is still my team. He's yeah. still my brother. I still rip him the whole way. Yeah, there's no confusion about that. But I know that there was a lot of. Oh, okay. Why is she doing this show with, with, with Keenan mm. on the Bride show? Like, why is this? Are you still family to you? Are you what? Mm. Guys, we still good. But I just want to know from uh, you, your my, perspective. My perspective, when I saw you on the show, I was like, okay, well, it's not, it's not, I wasn't too shocked. Really? If, I'm, if I must be honest. I think because I understand at the end of the day, you're also an individual outside of Family Tree. Yeah. And I think you took that decision as an individual artist outside of Family Tree. And it's not that it's not that you don't have his back and it's not that you're not on his team. But I also think at some point, you also need to kind of then say, I'm also trying to do my own thing and not necessarily have a beef with somebody that you don't actually have a beef with Keenan if I we must be honest yeah. do you know what I mean so for me it was like the beef's not with you it's actually with your brother you're yeah. supporting him but you don't ha actually have the the, 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 the issue yeah. so I think you were also just trying to say look I can do me even though my yeah. team is my team that's what I saw it as yeah. 100% I also feel like in America it happens all the time where dudes have beef but 
uh, they cool with their friends being friends with the person they have beef with. Yeah. Because in America, it's understood that, yo, it's business. Yeah. yeah. So when you did that, I was fu- I was like, fuck, it's about time. Yeah. <laughs> because I know that if it was Refugio on the other end, he would have been slapping down the homies even yeah. if he were beefing with them. Because he's like, this is my career. Yeah. I'm not saying that to paint him in a bad picture. I'm just saying that to be honest on some, I know how much he loves his career. Yeah. And I know how much he wouldn't let someone else's problems into Interfere with, with the progression of his, his career. career. Yeah. So when you, whether whatever made you make that decision, were finally ready to go, whatever comes with this decision, I'm gonna do the show. Yeah. I was like, dope. Then I remember you saying a while back that you'd never do a song with him. When he, when then on the show you were like, I not do a song. I was like. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. yes. I'm actually glad he also asked you about the baddest remix because I also feel yeah. like even with that situation because it's not like you didn't want to do the remix or whatever the case was but whatever miscommunication that kind of happened I was glad that it finally got cleared up at some point because yeah. I think you had your side of the story he had his side of the story but it wasn't really like together oh this is actually what, what happened. happened you know what I mean yeah. so I'm just glad that was also kind of aired out yeah Yeah. okay guys I appreciate that <laughs> alright no, it's, it's for, for real this time <laughs> game over. Oh, 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 not we're not completely game oh, over. Thanks, we're, I actually, love this. we're actually game on. Oh, because yeah. remember you we got some questions. Some trivia. Some trivia. All right, oh. so we're gonna start with you first before because you can't find your card. I found it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's keep it there. <laughs> All right, so... Yo, I was about to say some sideways shit. <laughs> Yo. Sorry, anyway, I'll tell you offline because you might put it in this video. <laughs> uh, do you never know with DZ, yeah? You don't trust him. Anyway, okay, so I've got a couple of um, rap lines here. Mm. Mm. And I want to find out if you know these people. I probably don't. I mean... I don't listen to people. Give it a, give it a shot. Oh, so but you want people to listen to you. Hey, yeah. Yes, it does. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> I have a lot to say. <laughs> All right, okay. So who do you think said this? I had to boss up, nigga boss up. Deco- I'm not Dekola, I'm Indigo Seller. Wow, okay. Ooh, hold on and give her a horn. <laughs> <laughs> I said my face bomb as tight. I'm Cardi B. Hold on, hold on. You know what? I see what she did. You know what they do in like uh, pool, pool, pool halls in the States? Mm. Yeah. When someone starts playing a whack game, <laughs> then you're like, yo, we want to play a game for 20 bucks? And then you get... <laughs> and then they smash you. Yeah, that's what she did to us. She's like, oh, I'm probably not going to know anybody. <laughs> Meanwhile, give it to her, Cosy. All right. Um, ambitious till forever. Ironic how this label got me feeling independent. Is that MT? No. Fifi Gupa? No. Is it someone from Ambitious? <laughs> I try no, stuff out. It must be. Say it again. Ambitious till forever. Ironic how this label got me feeling independent. It sounds like mm. someone who was signed to, to Ambitious. Kulichana. He was signed. He was signed to Ambitious. Oh, was signed to Ambitious. Yeah, yeah it probably starts with an A. <laughs> hey, Reese. <laughs> was it? Hey, Reese. It sounds like him. <laughs> <laughs> Bomb it. <laughs> So, but I don't really listen to Aries. Not out of like. He's a good writer. He's, he, no, he's amazing. He's amazing but I actually writer. need to sit down and listen yeah. to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, 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 the project right. he did with Mash Beats was really dope. Really, yeah. I'm gonna check that out. 100. All right, so you've got a card there. Yeah. Um, we need to guess. Hopefully, get these questions right. Okay, this is. I, I don't have to do an order, ne? Okay, what did um Refile fill up? I mean, Casper fill up. Ha, Moses, not Moses, my pin. Oh, the first one, the first one. The dome. The dome. Yes. Um, this guy's. Oh. This guy's oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is a new um Gen Z artist that's come out. He's got like um braid. No, black guy. And he's got a song that goes Ayebo. Ayebo. Benny Ayebo. Chill. Yes, Benny yes, yes. Chill. <laughs> okay, and then this guy is South Africa's favorite guy. He's a comedian. He went overseas and Trevor Noah. Yes. Trevor. This is a stupid list that probably both of you guys have been on and you must never do it again because it's trash. Men are trash. No, no. Uh, uh, it's a list. It's the base b- hardest MCs. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so talk it to me about your, t- it is about your, about yeah. your. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna reveal your what? displeasure about that list? Ugh, ugh, why would I talk You're about done, them yeah? again? I'm done. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Oh, and good. officially, it is game over. <laughs> Fuck that. Should list. I suck my dick? Ooh. <laughs> game over. <laughs> <laughs> what 
an insightful in a conversation with Miss Nadia, man. Yeah. I l- I love how real she came with yeah. it today. You she's, know, she's 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 coming to herself. A hundred percent. And and it's so nice to see how she's growing, how she still sees more within her career, and how far she kind of was still wants to take herself. You know what I mean? Because sometimes people hit a bit of a, a brick wall, and it's nice that she's just like, yo, when I when I have kids, I want to do this. When mm. I do this, I, I want to do that. And it's not just I just want to be on stage the whole time. And she wants it. Yeah. Like a lot of times, I won't lie, I never. I, it's I seldom get the feeling of ladies wanting it. Yeah. Like I get that from her. Like she's chasing it and she wants it. It wakes her up at night. It keeps her up in the morning. Like we are phone all the way. A hundred percent. And I and I dig it because the more ladies who are wanting it, the yeah. more you're going you're to inspire. Manifest it. Yeah, and you're also going to inspire younger girls to understand that there uh, there is a, a place for them in this industry. You know. Showcase as well. Yeah. So talking about making way for people who want a place in this industry we're also going to jump straight into on the come up um, right here on a pop radio and this is where we discuss new artists who are doing big things some of the songs that have actually caught our attention and these are the songs that we think you possibly need to check out as well so we are going to drop the links to their songs right here on uh, the comment section so make sure make sure that you check it out it is going to be available and uh, yeah man stream the music and let us know your thoughts about it so do you have a song for us to kind of rock with it first I have two songs Songs that I really want you guys to check out. Well, the first one is not really a song, but more over like an artist. Okay. His name is July 56. Okay. He's really, really a dope dude. He kind of like raps slash sings. And yeah, that's the other one is undoubtedly like having Pharrell on a track with Josie, the track on the subconsciously. Yeah. It's called Tennis Calls. Yes. Love that song. Yes. Love yes, that yes. song. And the use of Pharrell on the song. If you're going to have Pharrell, some people might just overuse him on the chorus, mm-hmm. overuse him on the verse. But um, yes. one, two. Um, yeah, I God. also like that he used um, Una Rams on Una a Rams, tune. Rams, yes. You know, I think that was a very unlikely one for me. And when I saw Una was featured on the track, I was like, yo, shout outs to Black Coffee. He's yeah. always got his eye on the on the, on the kids. You know Straight what I mean? up. I think they shot a video for it. Yeah. I saw on Una's Instagram page. Yeah. I was wearing a Tebe Makoku set and Coffee was with him on set. So I think they're showing a video to that very same track. That's so dope. All right. So the kid that I need you to check out goes by the name of Hype1108. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Wap. Um, he's from Mzansi, um, and he's featuring Maclera Dope Boy, SPK, as well as a DJ Came Award. The song is called Moi. Really awesome song. I am playing it on the radio as nice. well. Uh, he's got an EP out. It's called Oceans. I'm digging the vibe, and Maclera's voice on the thing is just coming through with the. <laughs> Should we let the people know that we lost a Maclera Dope Boy interview? Yo, my gosh, my heart is broken. I would like a Man. pop radio Maclera Dope Boy interview. <laughs> Footage gone. Yeah, but don't worry, we'll get him back. We'll, have, we'll to. have to save it. We're going to save it. Don't worry. But that song is really dope. Go and check it out. The kids are definitely putting in a lot of work. I'm yeah. loving I'm loving how much attention they're taking into the overall production of the music as well. Uh, whether it be engineering, the mastering, the full-on projects are start sounding really crisp. So shout-outs to Hype1108. He's doing really big things. And uh, yeah, man, keep on pushing. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> is that it? Yeah, I think that's it for us for today. Obviously, we... we stretched it a little bit with Nadia as well so I think it was the, the base of it was the conversation which no we had um, but we'll definitely be back with another episode of Pop Radio Shoba Fetu it's been dope please do uh, follow us check out any other content that we might be pouring out out on uh, our socials or on YouTube. If it's not Popcast, it will be Pop Radio, of course. Make sure you follow us on social media, Popcast for Real. That is on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And make sure that you keep on subscribing and liking and watching the videos come back again next week. We got you with the Popcast. Game over.